unless you say? I say no. I say no. In the long run, it's right to work for more. It's a win-win situation. It's a win situation for union members. It's a win situation for union members because where you have no right to work law, unions have monopolies. There are, you join the union or else. And union leaders can tend to become arrogant, unresponsive to their own members, whereas if you have a right to work law, the unions have to fight to get members. They have to offer value for their services. And so this, in a sense, is a pro-competition in the labor markets. And it, it, it's pro, and it's good for union workers uh, and union members because it, it, it forces union leaders to be more accountable to their own members. And if I <clears throat> might just add, I'm not a commas, but from the perspective of job growth, I think it's also important to say that Ohio doesn't have much of a choice in this matter. If you look at the economic data over 30 years, we're falling farther and farther behind these states, some of them historically poor southern states. So um, the right to work for less basically is ignoring the place that Ohio is in. Our economic uh, per capita growth, the only two states worse than Ohio are West Virginia and Michigan. So everybody's growing faster than we are. So I think that has to be part of the equation. If Ohio was doing well, maybe you could say we don't want to risk it with some with some of the different options for reform. But given our history, we can't afford to take anything off the table. All of the other states are doing better than us, growing faster than us, have higher per capita income. So we can't afford to take this type of option off the table. Is, I think what makes, comes clear from the economic data. To reference Kevin's statistic, I think he was referencing total growth of personal income from 1977 to 2000. In a, and if you actually look at the census data or actually grew the economic analysis data, I think we are the third lowest state in the union. So, so we have a, a growth deficit. Uh, one economist once said, you know, it's better to have a job paying $14 an hour than to not have a job paying $16 an hour. So even in the short run, if in fact there were some workers who got themselves in situations where there wasn't a union, there wasn't before, and they make a little less. That, those situations happen. But the broader picture is more Ohioans will work, they will earn more money, there will be more labor income, there will be more uh, uh, capital income too because there will be more investment in this state. And we would just be better off. We'd be more prosperous. How better off? How better off? We estimated in this study that if in the year 1977 we had somehow adopted a right to work law, and it still was intact in, in, in today, Ohio families would probably have an income of about $12,000 more, or about $3,000, that's assuming a family of four, $3,000 per person. We did some alternative estimates uh, changing the model a bit. It's a statistical model, it's a regression analysis. I'm glad to talk about regression analysis. It usually puts people to sleep, so I don't usually talk much about it. Love to talk about it. I'd love to talk about t-values and t-statistics and r-squares. I could do that if you want me to. Uh, but uh, even under the most conservative estimates, we'd say a family of four would be 9,000 bucks a head in 2008 versus 1977. That's real money. That's the difference between having a three-bedroom house and a four-bedroom house. It's the difference between taking a vacation at uh, uh, Cedar Point versus a cruise to uh, the Caribbean. There's a lot of things. I'm not going to see the point, by the way. Uh, a lot of things uh, that uh, families could do. The quality of life is higher. It's a quality of life issue. People are happier where there's right to work laws. Why do they don't move there to those right to work states? Sorry. <laughs>